Coach, last few years, Michigan's defense statistically has been one of the best in the country, especially going against teams like Iowa, pro formation teams, and that once again proved itself last Saturday against Iowa. Well, when the Wolverines are playing great defense, they're very sound. Obviously, they got very good players, but they're also, they play single gap defense. And for the viewer here, the gaps are, the A gaps are on each side of the center. So your A gap is the interior. As you move out, the B gap is outside the guard, and C gap is outside the tackle. That D gap is outside the tight end. In single gap defense, everybody's got a gap responsibility. Okay. Now, Iowa's kind of playing in their hands right here. They're playing an I formation. You don't see that very often. There's a fullback, and whenever you enter or add a player into the gap, the linebacker has to spill it or box it. Well, let's just talk about that for a second. So depending on the coverage, and they actually had a terrible mistake against Wisconsin, they spilled it, there's no defender there, and it was a 75-yard touchdown. So it all has to be coordinated to the coverage. So you can see 29 here is going to spill the ball to Thomas, number one, the safety. Right. And does an excellent job. He's taking it on with his right shoulder. This is not by accident. This is very well coordinated. And Thomas knows that he's the free player. Freeze it right when Thomas gets there. I mean, that's exactly, I mean, every, I, like you say, every gap is covered. There's someone in the A gap, the B gap, the C gap. And for the viewer, that's a, you, you're, this is well done. It's well defended. Let's look at another example of the same thing. Okay, here's another play by Iowa. Once again, they're kind of playing right into the teeth of the Wolverine defense. Uh, they're just trying to, obviously, in the red zone, uh, get some plus yardage. No, there's going to be a free hat. But I, I'm always intrigued, and I think the viewer is too, that when you see the linebacker here, number 29, take on the fullback with a big-time collision, that's a big hit. But he's taking it on with his left shoulder because he understands number 14 is the free player. Right. He's the free hat. He spills it to him. Well-coordinated defense. Good leverage on the outside by number 24 in the defensive end. There's nowhere to go. And number two just has a great effort. Great effort. He actually beats a, a, a double-team block there. And Metellus, 14, he, he can even support faster here because it's in the red zone. There's right. no depth to the field. And, and he's staring at the tight end. When he sees the tight end go block, he knows he's the free hat. Right. That's well done, though. Really well done. So that's an example of the run. Let's go and take a look at some of the pass plays that Iowa did against Michigan. Whenever you play one of the top defenses in the country, which they usually have, because they're very good uh, uh, personnel and obviously well coached, you want to do, you want to keep them off schedule. You talk about keeping the offense off schedule. We would always do our best to try to keep the defense off schedule. For example, it's second and 10 here. You know Iowa's going to be forced into kind of a throwing situation. And this is, you don't want to, you don't want to do this against a great defense. Look at the stances of the D linemen. You can just tell the elongated stances. Right. This is much different than anything you saw. Now they're just teeing off because they know right. it's going to be, and plus it's an empty set. You can see there's no, there's no threat to run. So what's that mean? These guys just come screaming off the ball. Iowa really has no chance. I mean, as hard as they're pouring off the ball, watch Nate Stanley, one, two, three. By the time he sets his feet, he's already getting pressure. People talk about keeping the offense off balance. When you face a great defense, you got to break your tendencies. If you're if you're just going to go run, run, pass, or run and a long yard is passed, you don't want to do that against great personnel. And everybody talks about Michigan's pressure defenses. This is a four-man rush. Four-man rush. But look at their stances. Right. I mean, they're sprinter stances now. They're not. They don't care about a run. Right. There's no run threat. And sometimes, a lot of times, I think, isn't, isn't there a signal to the defensive line where you actually tell them? If it's a run, it's my fault as a coach. You rush the pass. It. That's right. And green, green, green. Right. Blue, blue, blue. Green means run. Blue means pass. Right. Yeah. That's old school, Jerry. That's good. Old school, yeah. Now, as the game goes on, this is in the fourth quarter. You know, Don Brown's scheming now. What's the objective against a very good defense? Keep them off schedule. Throw a little bit more on first down. Maybe run on third down to get them out of their tendencies. This is third down and nine. He's got a very good blitz package I saw for the last four years. You can see the quarterback and the center and left guard right. are pointing to number six, right. number 29. So that means that the five offensive linemen, because they want to get the backs out, they don't want to use the backs in protection. So you five are going to block the three down linemen and these two linebackers. We're going to block five for five, try to get the backs out. That's what the quarterback's doing. After everybody gets set, you can see the two guys, they're actually turning to the offensive line end up both dropping. Watch number six starts backing out of there. The ball snapped, 29 drops. The two guys are 
actually turning to dropped. Right. And that leaves the linebacker coming free with a free swing at Nate Stanley. It's a blitz, yet only four people are coming. Right. Watch the four offense linemen for Iowa blocking two people, yet one guy comes free. 